One of the things you will see around the world, I've spoken all over the world, is that people have 24 hours a day. They put it on an axis of money and their other resources, and they manipulate them to keep them stable. In the chart in front of you, you will see what, what 300 people in poverty say they spend their time on. In our program called Getting Ahead, we ask them, we say, you're an expert in poverty, tell us how you spend your time. Take a minute and look at this chart. What do you see on this chart that you yourself would not spend time on? Agency time is the time you go to agencies for help, welfare, food stamps, etc. The next chart is what people in stable environments, middle class if you will, i.e. they know where they're going to sleep at night. They got out food every day. This is what they say they spend their time on. Take a minute and look at it. What do you see on this chart you didn't see on the first chart? The last chart is what people in wealth say they spend their time on. Now this is the top 1% of households, 7.8 million more net worth in America. Now keep in mind, these are not stereotypes. They're just patterns that people tend to use. Not everybody in each of those groups will do it that way. But the point of this is all three circles are in your state all three circles are in your community and they don't talk to each other. Which circle makes the rules for your state? The laws tends to be in the wealth. Which circle runs the institutions in your state? Tends to be in the middle, middle class. And from which circle do the majority of your clients come? Poverty. And the thing is, the rules are different the time allocations are used just differently, and there's little understanding of the thinking. And there's hidden rules. Hidden rules are unspoken cueing mechanisms people use to let you know you do or don't belong. And the way you know you broke one is the way people look at you. All right, we have them in your grandma's house had hidden rules. Your mom's house had hidden rules. We have them by race, religion, region of the country. Well, we have my class, too. We have my country of origin. Well, they exist by class, too. For example, how you kind of know the mindset of someone is what they do with their time and money. That's the first indicators. And if you're in that stability mindset, then basically what you spend a lot of time every day on is work, education, and material security. What people in stable environments tend to do is they tend to go to work, they do that with their time, they go to school to get better jobs, and they buy things that become an asset, like a mortgage. And they have four rules about money. Number one, I don't ask you for money and you don't ask me. Number two, if you borrow, you have to pay it back. Number three, you never ever quit a job until you have another one. And number four, you don't tell people your salary. But if you were in wealth, and you've been in wealth, and you've been there two generations or more, then you have a different problem again. Your problem is you have more resources than you can take care of by yourself. And so what you do is you spend your time differently. It's on social, financial, and political connections because they keep you safe and they help you make more money. You see, you have a problem. If you own your own business, if you have a 15,000 square foot home, you have to hire people to help you. And that makes you vulnerable in many ways. And in wealth, one of the hidden rules is when you go to a party among that truly wealthy, you don't introduce yourself. You are introduced. It indicates your safety and your connections. And what's the rule about money and wealth? Well, the rule is you just don't talk about it. Investments, yes. The cost of a particular item, no. But if you were in poverty, and you've been in poverty two generations or more, you have a different problem. Now, there's new money and old money. New money is about income. Old money is about connections. 
In poverty, there's generational poverty, two generations or more, the feds call it persistent, or working or situational poverty. In poverty, you have a different problem. You don't have material security. You have a few things, but very little security. My brother in Ohio made the slide in extreme poverty in 10 years. He lost his farm. He bounced around with employment. Then he got very sick. He had a handi severely handicapped child, which knocked a wage earner out of the household. Then he got cancer. He died. I paid for where he lived. I gave him several hundred dollars each month. I had a sister gave him cash. A sister paid utilities. A brother bought gasoline. We bought him a vehicle. But he made his decisions against relationships, entertainment, and survival. And the rule about money in poverty is this. If I ask you for some, and you have any, you have to share. And that's why in generational poverty, it's not unusual that parents fear their children getting too educated. Because when children get too educated, they leave. So in poor white neighborhoods, they say things like, you're getting above your raisins, you're too big for your britches. In poor African-American neighborhoods, they call them Oreos. Poor Hispanic neighborhoods, coconuts. Poor Asian neighborhoods, bananas. Poor Native American Indian neighborhoods apples. But the issue is the same. We're afraid we're going to lose you. And the rule about money in poverty is you have to share. It's communal. Now, as you think about these hidden rules in your community, you begin to see how it shapes the thinking and the difficulty of the communication across them.